Hi there, Izzy from Digital Goja Showrooms and welcome to a new segment that we're going to start. This is the top 15 questions asked about how to use my Nikon D7100. Now, I scoured the blogospheres, Amazon, eBay, our own website. I even checked customer service questions and phone calls that I've received. And this is pretty much a basics 101 on how to get comfortable to work with your Nikon D7100. So these are gonna be 15 questions that are very basic so honestly, if you are an advanced enthusiast or prosumer, this might not be for you. But you know what? Take a look at it anyway, because maybe there are some questions that we will be able to answer for you that will solve some issues, even though they are very basic. And of course, if this video is helpful to you, remember to click the like button underneath and also subscribe to the channel. How do I switch between card slots? Well, this is very simple. The beauty of this camera is you have two actual card slots. You have number one, which is a default, and number two. So I'm going to place one card here. Make sure you push it till it locks it in place. And press the second one, lock it in place, turn on the camera. Now we're going to go into our menu setting and we're going to go into the role played by card slot number two. So when you move over, you have the first option is overflow. That means that when the first card slot is filled up, the second one will take over. Then you also have the backup feature, which is great. I like to use this myself because that means that it could back up your images in case something happens onto your second card. It's better safe than sorry. And of course, the third option is where slot one does raw imaging and slot two does JPEG imaging, again, of the same image. Now, if you are readily into video, you obviously want to do the first one, which is overflow. Because remember, your camera stops recording at 29 minutes and then it switches over. So you want to make sure that you have enough room, especially since we're now recording in 1080p. And then some of us photographers and videographers have enough room with today's 32 and 64 gig cards. So the second feature. And then of course, if you are just doing a photography shoot, your RAW and JPEG is a great advancement. We're trying to answer some of the more readily available questions for the Nikon D7100. Another popular one is, can I work with an external microphone? Absolutely. Nikon went all out to make sure that this is your perfect DSLR for video recording. So you have the capability of plugging in a standard 3.5 plug. So notice how this attaches to the top. And you now have your 3.5 plug connector here. And you also have for your headphone monitor, you're going to activate your menu and scroll down in the camera setting to movie settings and then scroll down to microphone so that you can activate the sensitivity. And of course, you can tell it to work with an external microphone or an existing built-in microphone. Activate this. You can even set the destination of where your movie settings are going to go, whether you want it to go into your slot one or slot two. We're now going to take a look at how to choose our focusing points. First, you want to make sure that you have your focus dial set to AF right here. And then you're going to click on your info button hit it twice and now notice here you have the capability of shifting over your focusing points. So this way you can be real specific in where you want your D7100 to maintain its focusing parameters. They made it really simple. Mm -hmm. 
what is the ISO highest rating for this camera? Well, they did a really great job with this. This makes a big difference between the 7000 and the 5200 series cameras that are out there. The beauty of it is they made it very easy to handle. You're going to press your ISO button and then you're going to look at your readout dial on top and notice with your command dial you can switch anywhere from 100 ISO all the way to the standard 6400 ISO. Now of course you have high ratings all the way up to 2.0 so you can bring this all the way up to theoretically over 25,000 ISO but honestly when the manufacturer gives you this rating right here this is the one that you could max it out at without having to deal with tons of noise issue and now that we speak of noise issue you also have the capability of activating your noise reduction system and that's really simple by just pressing the info button on the back and notice how now I have the capability of activating my high ISO noise reduction so if I am working with the super high ISOs I can interpolate it and hit it to the high setting or you can turn it off altogether if you're working with some of the lower ISOs like 100, 200, and 400 ISO. How do I set up my dust eliminating feature? Basically, today's newer DSLRs have a feature where it does the dust removal. So, we're going to turn on the camera and we're going to click on our menu button and notice how I am in the little tool icon. So you're gonna scroll down to where it says clean image sensor. Now, you have the clean now feature where when you activate that, it does the cleaning feature and notice how it tells you that it is cleaning the image sensor. And it's done. And then you also have a way to set it up whether you're cleaning at startup and shut down or just clean at shutdown or clean at startup. Honestly, it puts a little bit more strain on my camera, but I prefer using the clean at startup and shutdown. This way I can guarantee that I don't have to go into the next feature, which is the lock the mirror up for cleaning. That's one that I'm not a big fan of or Worst case scenario, and if you don't want to do this until you send it out to a professional, you do have the image dust off reference photo, which is taking an image of a white background and saving that so that when the camera looks at your other images, it guarantees to remove the dust particles that are now invading your precious sensor. And the other aspect that you have to worry about is when you change lenses, make sure that your camera is always facing down and you want to remove and change the lenses quickly so that you have the least issue with having this exposed to excessive amount of dust and debris. Well, can you use your existing ENEL 3E battery with the new Nikon D7100? I'm afraid not. Number one, they switch to a totally different format. They now work with the ENEL 15, which happens to be one of the more popular batteries out there now. It actually works on a lot of their different DSLRs and even some of their more heavy duty point and shoots. Plus, it now has, of course, a totally different charging system. This is the MH25, which has a really nice feature. You have the capability of using it with this adapter that it comes with as a wall war system. but it also comes with your cord. I myself prefer this feature because sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll find that some of the hotel rooms have the actual AC connectors in really odd places. So it becomes really difficult to be able to put it as a wall war system. So this allows you to extend it out and gives you the added benefit of not having this flush in there and also forgetting it. I usually tend to put this on my nightstand so I don't forget it. Usually if you have a wall wart, I've happened, it, at least it happened to me many times, I've forgotten about it. The average lifespan with this battery is usually about 900 shots. So again, 
it does a very good job of being able to capture all your video and imaging needs with this new ENEL 15 battery. What lenses will work on my Nikon D7100? Well, at this point, I'm using one of the more popular art series lenses out on the market. This one is the Sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8. And I can also use one of my existing DX lenses from one of my older D3200 cameras. That works perfectly on there. Now, this being a camera that has a built-in focusing motor, you can work with the older AFS lenses or the newer DX and G series lenses, plus all the other Nikon mount lenses that are on the market, like some of the Sigmas, the Tamrons, the, uh, the Tokinas, the Alturas, all the lenses that have the Nikon F mount since way back in the 70s. That meaning that actually even includes some of the older manual series lenses. The mount has not changed since the 70s. So you'll be able to mount it on your new D7100 and not have any issues. But of course, the focusing mechanism is important depending on the lens that you put on there. Right now, it has the capability of focusing full time with the DX lenses, the AFS lenses, and of course, with something as elaborate as the art series 18 to 35 millimeter very quick very fast focusing right on the money how do i set my camera or does it actually do hdr photography yes it does they did a really fine job again another added benefit you want to hit the info button and that brings up your lower settings and move it over to where it says HDR, high dynamic range. And you have different modes. You have it for series of images that are combined multiple images. You have all on one single photo. And then of course you have the off feature. And you can also set the strength, whether you want the camera to set it automatically for you or if you're working in really low light situations or you want to have much higher contrast you can go to extra high your high setting normal and your low setting if you're working in a really bright environment very simple to do is this camera simple to work with for a novice beginner absolutely Notice on your control dial that you start out with your standard auto setting that we're all used to, but Nikon went a step further and added the scene mode, where here, using your command dial, you have many different setups, depending on the kind of imaging you want to do. I mean, we have a setting for any kind of shooting situation. So this way, you could be more advanced in your imaging and photography, but you don't have to go into your manual aperture or shutter speed settings. You have plenty to choose from. Plus, on top of that, we even have an effects setting where we can do low key, high key. Notice for any kind, you even have selective color where you can go ahead and pick the particular color you want and turn the rest of your image in black and white. So they really did a great job in guaranteeing that you have a lot to choose from, but you're not overwhelmed with having to immediately jump into your manual settings like your P, S, A, or M. Another question that I've seen on the internet is, can I use the higher gigabyte cards like the 64 gigabytes? Absolutely, this camera is meant to work with all the SD, XC cards that are on the market. Notice that right now I'm using one of the SanDisk Ultra. This one is the SD XC Micro in 64 gigabytes. It's a class 10 and it allows me to do rapid shooting and also raw files. The reason I work with the Micro is because since it comes with an adapter, I can use this on my GoPro and also on my DSLR. And of course, it'll fit perfectly into the card slot. Remember to push it till it locks in. 
and since this camera has two slots I also work with a 32 gigabyte and I have it set to my backup so this way if I get into a situation where I'm having to run out of space I can automatically have the camera move over here and again keep in mind that there are even larger cards out there so there's some 128 gigabytes now hitting the market and even 200 gigabyte cards but honestly it's better to work with some of the smaller cards instead of trying to keep as they say all your eggs in one basket you don't run a gamut that if something goes wrong you lose everything that way you get into a good habit also of downloading on a regular basis I've read on a lot of the question blogs that are out there a lot of users are having confusion on how do I do a quick format for my memory card I've tried doing it on the computer it's not working properly I'm having a lot of issues and that happens if you do a lot of deleting on the fly by just pressing the little trash can that is not going to delete all your images properly it really is just compressing them so notice how they have an orange icon for format here and if you look in the front you have another one here this one is right next to your uh, matrix and metering button so the way they did it is once you hold both of these buttons down simultaneously that will instantly format your card now icon came up with this idea to make it easy for the photographer especially to guarantee that you get a nice clean format on your card so it works as if it was day one but you always have to remember once you format it those images are pretty much gone forever and it's very simple to do you hold both buttons at the same time for about five seconds and it will format your card uh, we've had some customers ask well what do I do about changing my shooting capability I want to go to single shot continuous well this being more of a professional camera line from Nikon they made it so that instead of having to go into the menu and change it they gave you a proprietary dial right on the outside notice when you press this little lock button that releases the ring and it allows you to switch over from single shot where it only shoots once as you press it and continuous low and continuous high which can go all the way up to seven frames per second you even have a Q mode which is a quiet shutter mode you barely hear this this is great if you're trying to deal in an environment especially a lot of us work with this camera in weddings and uh, recitals and so forth where you don't want the high noise rate of your shutter so that's a really great feature of course this is where you also have your self timer mode and your mirror up mode so that you can take your long exposures and, and not have the issue of movement from your reflex mirror going up and down on a continuous basis very important if you're doing time-lapse photography or longer exposures that's why they made it so that it can be done on the fly I found another question on there some users are asking can I use my USB connector from my previous Nikon DSLRs well this one seems to be very universal when it comes to the Nikon DSLRs so if you notice on the side there is your USB port and now I'm going to use the supplied USB cable and this one seems to be the same one that I also had for my D90 and my D300S so yes it is the same connector cable there and of course you have the USB 2.0 connector on this side now honestly I'm not a big fan because remember this is not charging your camera so if you're downloading and in the middle of the download your battery is not fully charged and it dies you might corrupt some of the files I'm a big fan of the USB card readers these are very well made they're easy to work with they keep getting smaller and smaller and notice how you have a room for your SD card and since a lot of us work with GoPros out there they pretty much control that market guess what you also have a micro 
USB card reader attached. So you could be working with two different cards, swap them out. So you can have one reading on this one and another one on the other drive. And again, this you don't have to worry about it. You just plug this into your computer, your laptop, whatever your download properties are, and you leave it attached there at all times. You don't have to worry about the battery running out or having an issue with getting the files corrupted. I've noticed that some users are having issues where they've come in here and maybe they're new to the DSLR realm and this is a very sophisticated camera. It has a very elaborate menu system. If you look on here, there's multiple folders with subfolders built in. So let's say you went in here and started setting stuff up and now your camera is acting all sorts of weird. You don't know what to do. You're freaking out. You've done battery pulls and that doesn't work because this is really not a cell phone. So guess what? Nikon thought about this. They gave you a really simple way to do a factory default reset. All you have to do is look for these two green buttons. You have one here, which is right next to your under and over compensation button next to your shutter. Notice the green. And then you have another one down here, right next to where your ISO button is. So when you hold both of these for about 10 seconds, boom, that's an automatic reset. Your camera is now set to the factory default as if you just literally took it right out of the box. Can I attach an external battery grip to my Nikon D7100? Yes, you can. There is an original manufacturer MB15 grip and I have an aftermarket here from Vivitar. They both work the same way. You're going to leave one battery in the camera. So your ENEO 15, one stays in the camera and then another one is placed inside the grip. Of course, the grip also comes with an optional AA battery insert, but honestly, that's for really emergencies. You really want to take advantage of the much more powerful ENEL 15 batteries. Notice how it snaps in. To remove it, you press down on the button. Again, load it back in until it snaps in place. Place the battery in, lock it, and then you're going to thread this onto your camera just as if you were mounting a tripod to it. So, line up the threads and turn this following the lock procedure. And now the beauty of it is that you now have access to two batteries. So you have double the power. Plus you can also shoot vertically this way, which is a very nice feature, especially for us photographers, so we don't have to try to do this kind of thing. You can shoot directly from here, and you have your command dials to change your aperture and shutter speed. Plus you also have to access your menu, you have a toggle switch right on the grip itself. So this gives you the added benefit of an additional external battery, so you don't have to stop what you're doing and swap out batteries. Plus, you also have a better ergonomic grip if you're working in situations where, especially as a photographer, you want to do vertical shooting. And for us videographers, again, it's fantastic because you have double the power now.